For centuries, humans have looked up at the night sky and wondered, are we alone? And if there's a second home for life in our solar system, it's Mars. A planet that once had water, a planet that scientists believe might still hold secrets beneath its rust-coloured surface. But is Mars truly lifeless? Or have we simply been looking in the wrong places? Today we embark on a journey through time and science, uncovering the mysteries of the Red Planet. We explore the long and complex history of our search for life beyond Earth. I think the one thing which is very likely is that if, uh, if Mars does have life, it will be a life very different from the sort we have here. Could life have started on Mars before it even began on Earth? Could remnants of an ancient biosphere still linger beneath its surface? If we do find life on Mars, what does it mean for humanity's future? The idea of life on Mars is nothing new. For thousands of years, Mars has captured the imagination of astronomers, scientists and storytellers alike. The Romans named it after their god of war, captivated by its red, blood-like hue. The ancient Egyptians carefully tracked its movements across the night sky. To them, Mars was more than a celestial body. It was a mystery, a force, a sign of something beyond human comprehension. Fast forward to the 19th century and humanity's fascination with Mars grew even stronger. In 1877, Italian astronomer Giovanni Schiaparelli peered through his telescope and saw what he believed were long, dark streaks crisscrossing the planet's surface. He called them canali, meaning channels, but in translation, this simple term became canals, implying something artificial, something built. This misinterpretation triggered a global obsession. Were these canals the work of an intelligent martial civilization? Were there vast irrigation networks stretching across Mars, supplying water to advanced alien cities? One of the most prominent believers in this theory was Percival Lowell, an American businessman and astronomer who devoted his career to proving that Mars was home to an intelligent race. In the late 1800s, he built an observatory specifically to study Mars, and for years, he meticulously mapped his surface, convinced he was documenting a living world. He proposed that a dying Martian civilization had constructed an elaborate system of canals to transport water from the planet's polar ice caps to its equatorial regions, a desperate attempt to survive an increasingly hostile environment. Lowell's theories were widely accepted by the public. His writings captivated audiences worldwide, fueling both scientific curiosity and wild speculation. This idea inspired H.G. Wells, who in 1898 published War of the Worlds, a novel about a terrifying Martian invasion of Earth. The book became a cultural phenomenon and solidified Mars as the alien world in human imagination. The belief that intelligent life lurked just next door in our solar system was no longer a question, it was an expectation. But science, as it often does, had a way of challenging our most exciting beliefs. With the dawn of the 20th century, 
More advanced telescopes allowed scientists to take a closer look at Mars, and what they saw did not match Lowell's descriptions. The canals disappeared. The more astronomers observed, the more they realized that these intricate networks were nothing more than optical illusions, tricks of light and shadow playing on the Martian surface. The difference between the spacecrafts of NASA and the lurid flying sorcery of that old radio war of the worlds is the difference between science and science fiction, and yes, between war and peace. It's our own world which has turned out to be the interplanetary visitor. We're the ones who were moving out there, not with death rays, but with cameras. Not to conquer, but simply to learn. Then came the space age. In the 1960s, NASA's Marina spacecraft flew past Mars, taking the first close-up images of the planet. The results were devastating to the idea of a thriving Martian civilization. This is man's first close-up photograph of another planet. Scientists who have examined Mars through telescopes are praising them for their clarity. These are 30 times better than any photograph yet taken. Looking north from the Martian equator, it shows a bright 200 by 600 mile area on the rounded edge of the planet. The lofty clouds at the upper right are believed to be dust, whipped up to extraordinary heights by the violent Martian winds. Mars was just a barren, cratered wasteland. No vast cities, no irrigation networks, no signs of life. The dream of intelligent Martians was crushed, but something else emerged from the rubble of these broken theories. A new, more exciting possibility. What if Mars had once been alive? What if, instead of intelligent aliens, Mars had harboured simple microbial life long ago? And if so, could remnants of that life still exist beneath the planet's surface? This shift in thinking laid the foundation for the next era of Martian exploration. If intelligent Martians never existed, then perhaps something smaller, bacteria, microbes or fossils, could still tell us that Mars was once a living world. All the life on the Earth is the same kind of life. And on the outside, we, we think we are pretty different. Uh, the, the oak trees and the petunias and the bears and the people, we have the sense are different kinds of organisms, but um, we're not. On the inside, we're all the same. We use the same kinds of biochemical molecules. And uh, what we don't know is whether those are the only kinds of molecules that can make biology go, or whether there's a vast variety of possible biologies of which ours is only a single case. And since you don't have enough time to let life evolve in the laboratory, the only way to test such a question is to go somewhere else and see what natural experiments nature has done for us on the surface of another planet. That's, uh, to my mind, one of the most exciting aspects of uh, the exploration of Mars. The first true test for life on Mars came in 1976, when NASA launched the Viking program. Two robotic landers tasked with conducting groundbreaking biological experiments on Martian soil. The mission was historic, marking the first time we would directly test another planet for signs of life. One of the most significant experiments on board was the labelled release experiment, designed by Dr. Gilbert Levin. The concept was simple yet profound. Martian soil samples were mixed with a nutrient solution containing radioactive carbon. You take a sample of water that you suspect of being contaminated with microorganisms, put it in a test tube with nutrient, and incubate that test tube at an elevated temperature for one to three days. 
hoping that you will see tiny bubbles in the test tube. Those bubbles are the evidence that something is alive in the test tube, consuming the nutrient and producing gas from it. And then something astonishing happened. When the soil was exposed to the solution, gas was indeed released. At first, excitement surged through the scientific community. But then, another experiment. The gas chromograph mass spectrometer delivered a blow to this excitement. It failed to detect organic molecules, leading NASA to declare that Viking's results were inconclusive. The experiment had produced a biological response, but without organic molecules, the official stance remained that no life had been detected. Dr. Gilbert Levin, however, disagreed. In his later years, he would continue to argue that Viking may have already found life, but we were too cautious or too unwilling to accept it. If we were able to do a thousand experiments, different experiments on Mars, and to do these in a wide variety of places on Mars, in the canyons, on the polar caps, in some deep areas of the surface, and if in all of these experiments we got negative results, then the answer to the question, is there life on Mars, would almost certainly be no. But on the basis of just a few experiments, done at only two sites, very bland sites on the planet, I think it would be unscientific for us to come to that conclusion. Even today, the Viking experiments remain controversial. Some scientists suggest that Martian soil contains perchlorates, chemical compounds that can break down organic molecules when heated, potentially explaining why the experiment failed to detect them. Could this mean that Viking actually found life, but our instruments accidentally destroyed the evidence? If so, could we have overlooked the greatest discovery in human history? In 1996, scientists announced a discovery that could redefine our understanding of life in the universe. A meteorite unearthed from the frozen wastelands of Antarctica held a tantalizing secret. This meteorite, ALH84001, was unlike any other. It had originated on Mars ejected by a colossal impact billions of years ago, and inside, within its fractures and crevices, were formations that bore an uncanny resemblance to fossilized bacteria-like structures. NASA held an emergency press conference, and President Bill Clinton himself addressed the world, declaring, Today, Rock 84001, speaks to us across all those billions of years and millions of miles. It speaks of the possibility of life. If this discovery is confirmed, it will surely be one of the most stunning insights into our universe that science has ever uncovered. Almost immediately, skepticism arose. Were these formations truly the fossilized remains of ancient Martian microbes? Or could they have been created through natural geological processes? Inside the meteorite, researchers found carbonate globules, formations on Earth that typically form in liquid water. These deposits were embedded within the fractures of the rock, hinting at the presence of an ancient Martian water system. But it was what lay inside these carbonate formations that sparked a global debate. Tiny, rod-shaped structures resembling fossilized bacteria. If this was biological, it was the first fossilized evidence of alien life. But science demands extraordinary proof for extraordinary claims. Firstly, the microscopic formations in ALH84001 were smaller than any known bacteria on Earth, which prompted skeptics to argue 
that they were too tiny to be functional living organisms. Some researchers also proposed that these structures could have formed through non-biological mineral growth without requiring life. And finally, many speculated that the meteorite sat in Antarctica for thousands of years before being discovered, and that earthly microbes may have infiltrated its cracks, creating a false illusion of Martian life. As time passed, enthusiasm for ALH 84001's biological origin waned. The debate over ALH 84001 remains unresolved. This is why modern Mars missions, including Perseverance and Curiosity, are targeting ancient lake beds, river deltas and subterranean ice deposits. The Perseverance rover, currently exploring Jezero Crater, is collecting rock samples that could contain biosignatures similar to ALH 84001. These samples will be returned to Earth in the Mars Sample Return Mission, where state-of-the-art laboratories will analyse them with unprecedented precision. Now we stand at the edge of a new frontier, one that will take our exploration of Mars to the next level. Not only will we send Mars to Earth, but soon we will send humans to Mars. For all the advancements in AI and robotics, machines have limitations. A rover can analyse a rock, a rover can take samples, but a rover cannot think like a scientist. It cannot see the subtle clues in the landscape, nor can it follow a hunch, the intuition that often leads to great discoveries. This is why, for the first time in history, we are preparing to send people to Mars. The Artemis program, which will return humans to the moon, is not just about lunar exploration. It is a training ground for the technologies and survival systems we will need on Mars. And when the day comes, those first footsteps on Mars will not just be another milestone in space exploration, they will mark the dawn of a new era for humanity. If we can survive on Mars, we may not just find life, we may become the life that thrives there. The search for life on Mars is not over. It is just beginning. Could life exist on Mars? Has it been waiting for us to find it? Or will the red sands remain forever silent? The universe is vast, the questions are endless, and the search for life continues. <laughs>